Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. Uh, we just hear some interesting, uh, very exciting experimental results. And now we switch topic to computational uh, science. Um, but our goal actually also try to aim to solve some real world experimental problems, uh, but just using a different approach. Our main interest uh, in the um, you know, biological system for both life science purposes and also applications uh, in important areas such as, you know, like sustainable chemical catalysis or biocatalysis. Okay, and uh, um, to do that, you know, uh, you know, compared to traditional computational chemistry, which more focus on like just explanation of some existing experimental results, you know, my group go beyond that. Uh, uh, on the one hand, like try to provide more uh, high accuracy quantitative predictions of some important properties. And on the other hand, uh, to provide improvement and sometimes even new results before the, the experimental study. But of course, further, you know, like let home verify by your experiment. So let me talk a little bit about that. Overall, you can see that you know structure uh, plays an important role, right? So um, yeah, um, to uh, you know understand the biomolecular properties and also their uh, activities. So not only just the static structure and property, but also like some reaction, some dynamic things, and building on that. People can use such knowledge to, you know, information to develop a drug or other kind of issues, you know. So regarding the structure, you know, actually, um, X-ray crystallography is the most widely used technique to determine atomic level structure. That's well known, but they also suffer actually many uh, kind of uh, magic problems, you know, like positions, identities, and even protonation states, you know. Of, of many structures are actually uncertain. Give you one example that for some, you know, metal binding sites, uh, which important, like for example, myoglobin, you know, everyone has myoglobin to transport oxygen, you know, some ligands can bind there. For this, you know, very small ligand, right, uh, to bind there. Um, so not complex structures, but even with resolutions better than two Armstrong. And uh, the Iron carbon, you see, the bond length can vary as much as 0.7 Armstrong. You know, the bond length itself is about 1.7. So, so the error margin is very large and the, the bond angle variation can be even large, you know, about 96 degrees. So this indicates some kind of problems in there. And therefore, you know, my group uh, tried to um, solve this problem yeah, by combining quantum mechanics, which, uh, is the most accurate physics for atomic world together with experimental like spectroscopic observers. For example, nuclear magnetic resonance, right? Uh, spectroscopic property or like electron spin resonance or many other kinds of spectroscopic properties. Uh, the fundamental basis is that because all these experimental spectral property are from a mathematical perspective, it, they are just functional of their coordinates. So if we can figure out this kind of relationship, we can then use that for me to determine the structure or refine structure. And for that purpose, my group has developed many competition methods. To, you can see that to give a very accurate prediction that this uh, R square are the you know, linear correlation coefficient for a uh, computed value compared to experimental value. Okay, you can see that the target goal is basically 0 0.99, you know. And because of that, we have already applied such kind of calculation to refine and also maybe in some cases to provide new structures that they, they have no extra structure before, you know. So we covered this kind of study. You can see that also many different protein systems, different reaction states, different metal environment. Yeah. Uh, so, and we, we are kind of focused on metal containing uh, proteins because this system actually more challenging. Yeah. Uh, but they are more useful because the metal center can have you know different oxidation state, different coordination state, different spin states, you know, to provide additional tuning point for biological or maybe some other application. Uh, I'll give you some brief uh, examples. You know, uh, this is uh, earlier work actually. Um, 
For example, you can see that uh, this is regarding how NO, nitric oxide, which is a very uh, important uh, signaling molecule, binds with the, like, uh, the heme protein. Many heme protein contain this, uh, you know, porphyrin, you know, uh, um, cofactor. And you can see that, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the, let me see, can I use the highlight? Yeah. Um, you see, for the protein structure, see, the bone length uh, variations reported by different structures and the bone angle range compared to the small molecules x-rays, you can see that definitely uh, these are more smaller ranges. And of course, protein environment would play a role, but because these are relatively strong bonds, so the protein environment effect, you know, consider the, we actually consider the energy cost of such kind of bone length, you know, elongation or bone angle variations. And we include uh, all these informations. We call that Z surface prediction. Like we calculated uh, uh, um, not only just any, but also, you know, like a different ESR property, mass bar property, you know, experimental measurable property based on like different bone lengths, bone angles and see which one has the highest probability and give the prediction. So the predicted values, you know, you know, um, you can see that also um, just have small difference compared to a small molecules X-ray structure. Yeah, and these are uh, can also give uh, excellent predictions of experimental spectroscopy property. So go beyond this uh, refinement. Refinement is an improvement of existing experimental structure. Uh, more recent work from my group is to determine uh, some atomic level structure that that this has no like uh, X-ray structure before. For example, for HNO, which is also very important uh, molecule. For example, it can be used to regulate secondary biochemical messenger CAMP, you know, and uh, it has more, uh, uh, has a better effect than NO to treat heart failure. So a lot of people are interested in this molecule, but there's no X-ray structure of any HNO bind proteins, okay? So we, we use heme protein as the starting point, try to determine a molecular level structure. And again, before that, we said that we, it's not just purely computational because otherwise so many approximations, you know, you cannot uh, give a good prediction. So we also use experimental, we combine quantum mechanics and experimental spectroscopy property. So we can, you know, for example, you know, uh, use some small molecules to calibrate our master, like for example, calculate like angle vibrational frequency, like proton chemical shift, NMR chemical shift, nitrogen, uh, you know, NMR chemical shift because they involve these kind of atoms, right? So these are all atomic level response factors with property. So this will give more useful information. And we, for example, in the early uh, model, you know, we compare like four major ones. This is actually proposed by experimental group when they after they done an NMR, they proposed that, and which is similar to you know like O2 binding, which is the native subject on, but we see it here. You see, for example, in this case, yeah, this structure can give excellent prediction for proton and mark chemical shift. But for nitrogen and mark chemical shift, this is a huge difference, right? So it means that there's some deficiency in this structure, okay? And the alternative, you know, hydrogen bonding pattern also have other issues. So later on, we propose because of the structure, it has both hydrogen bonding donor and hydrogen bonding acceptor. You know, we propose this new structure, okay, using this pattern and also explain many things. Not only CNC, all the properties now are in excellent agreement with experimental data. And also we explain that the stability is higher than this natural uh, substrate, uh, which is experimentally found that this is more stable actually. And also experimentally they found two different isomers that cannot be simply uh, exchanged. And we, you know, uh, naturally, you know, generate such kind of uh, um, two different isomers and those also all stable than that. And also see, they give this kind of small difference can also be reproduced here. And that value also agree very well with uh, unpublished, you know, uh, data there. And not only just this kind of core structure, but even including protein environment, like amino acids nearing it, you see? Uh, 
this actinol binding to one heme protein, which is called uh, myoglobin, and another heme protein. And they have, see, the difference is very small here, right? Regarding this chemical shift, but we can reproduce their trend. Okay, so so this uh, you know illustrates that we can use such kind of calculations to predict uh, you know high accurate structures for different uh, kind of you know uh, um, protein structures you know focusing on the the active side. And uh, beyond that, static structures, we also interested in reaction, <laughs> chemical reactions, not only for the as said, biological reactions, but also some catalytic reactions, you know, catalysts are important to, uh, you know, uh, for the chemical synthesis. And especially, you know, the green chemistry is very important that, uh, and by catalysts, of course, uh, you know, they have some nice features. And it, we have started already, you know, we can say published more than 50 or, or about 60, you know, different chemical reactions. And give you uh, two examples. One is related to biological reaction, like regarding how to trapping action, though. We just said action very important, right? So people also uh, studied that and using different enzymes, like, uh, you know, methylmyoglobin or catalase, you know, to trap it. And we not only provide the qualitative reaction pathways, you can see that they have, in fact, you know, the different reaction pathways, you can see that qualitative different, but also quantitatively, you can see. This is experimental value compared to the calculated reaction barrier, okay? And reaction barrier uh, is the highest energy point of the reaction pathway. So this is uh, most important to determine its kinetic uh, dynamic behavior. And for another different, uh, protein, we also have, you see, the accuracy is also very high. Another example I want to uh, talk about is uh, related to, you know, catalytic property, uh, chemical synthesis. And this area, uh, actually, um, the experimental pioneer, one of the experimental pioneer, Francis Arnold, got Nobel Prize two years ago uh, for her research in this area using like, uh, you know, di uh, directed evolution to uh, generous such kind of species and of course some other uh, catalytic systems and this kind of systems they have ex uh, exhibited promising properties you know catalytic property for a wide range of chemical transformations and also have you know some nice features but of course it's just up to means that in, in some uh, some kind of chemical reactions they are not that good and that's why you know we want to step in to to help. And in fact, in this area, although you see uh, basically uh, you know some green uh, features is that you know not only the the, the excellent property potential, but also they can basically um, have atom atom economic reactions. Okay, which means that in this area, the only byproduct is N two nitrogen. Okay. Uh, gas, which is benign, you know, to the chemical environment. So, so this is uh, uh, excellent, you know, no toxic uh, byproduct here, basically. And also, the the reaction is done at room temperature, okay. Uh, no, like high temperature or low temperature kind of issues. And also, you know, these proteins use iron, which is the most abundant uh, transition metal. Yeah, and uh, because this is, you know, protein originated, so the of course, you know, has biocompatibility and thus no or low uh, toxicity. On the other hand, they provide many tuning points on the, you know, heme active side and also amino acid, yeah, to afford that, you know, many different kind of uh, applications. And one major issue is that uh, you know there are basically no theoretical studies. Uh, uh, in, in early time. So our group you know, provides some kind of uh, very important, you know, the first time information, mechanics information in this area. You know, for example, for the cyclopropanation, you see the tri, uh, uh, the three member ring, you know, is an important motif in many drug molecules actually. Uh, and of course, you know, the carbon, this carbon, you know, can attack the double bond, you know, in a concerted way, or in a stepwise way, okay? And the uh, previous results using cobalt offering, actually, they found it's this pathway. So this is unknown, actually. But in the iron system, because it's new, we, we study 
specifically, you know, what kind of mechanism they 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 would adopt. And we compare, you know, uh, and both concerted and stepwise. So that's the advantage of computational chemistry. You know, you can artificially design the, the, the chemical system, undergo this pathway or the other pathway. And then of course, compare their like energies and other properties to see which one's more reasonable or which one is more energetically favorable. And here, for example, for this constraint, we can also uh, pre predict their the so-called stereo, uh, stereo selectivity, like this product is more favored and because the reaction barrier is, is much lower than that. Yeah. Um, so, and also we of course can explain why, you know, not because the structure here, like additional stabilization for it to make it more stable. And we can see that we can uh, also study their like different spin states. You know, these are like spin density data. And uh, so in some cases, you know, for example, these uh, almost close to zero, right? So almost no radical feature. So this is in the concerted pathway. And also, as I said, computationally, we can artificially design the system to have some kind of radical feature. Yeah. So this is in a stepwise way previous found is have, you know, radical feature. You can see that again, you know, that indeed have you know, close to one, uh, you know, spin density, yeah. And of course, you don't have exact one because of you know the bonding. <laughs> so electrons are shared between different atoms. And you can see that this kind of stepwise phase have much higher energy, uh, you know, seven to ten, you know, okay, uh, 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 higher than the concerted pathway. So excluding them, and uh, so we did the prediction first, and then at home. Actually, the experiment group did see two different sets of, of experiment to prove our prediction. These are non-radical reactions. Okay, so this is you know very important and excellent work uh, um, to to show that. And with such kind of mechanism established, then people can you know understand more property like electronic driving force and structural features, and also can predict other things. You know. For example, like kinetic isotope effect because of you know like hydrogen and uh, in the deuterium, you know um, they um, they can be uh, they they have some difference. You know, experiment they can be used to probe the the kinetic behavior. And uh, for such kind of you know quantitative behaviors, we can also have excellent predictions here. And uh, not only just you know that kind of cycle propagation, and also other kind of chemical reactions like CH insertion because many systems have CH bond, right? So, and we can reproduce, you know, different uh, kind of substrate selectivity. And uh, also, you know, uh, again, you know, like uh, uh, excellent prediction for the quantitative you know, values here. And we can show, of course, you know, uh, what's the reaction going on, you know, yeah. And the other kind of reactions, SIH insertions, you know, many different reactions and also quantitative data. And not only just the basic mechanism, but also we can study, uh, once we establish mechanism, we can then predict something for future, like what kind of maybe additional substance may be good for the reaction. And if we want to improve the catalyst, you know, what kind of, you know, carbines can be used or what kind of, you know, porphyrins, like what kind of substituent put there or axial ligand, like putting kind of axial ligand there, what kind of things there may be good for the, reaction so this will you know be helpful to save a lot of time in just the try and error in experimental work and uh, uh, just give you fun uh, final e example for stereo selectivity because uh, chiral this is related to the chiral center in some like drug molecules they're very important because oh you know uh, a different chirality may result in in like loss of the the drug activity and experimental data, you can see here, here, these are experimental data and the calculated data, you know, also, you know, agree very well. And not only for, you know, when we also calculate different protein system, you can, again, you know, very excellent predictions, you know, for different values and also for different yield chain, you know, things, yeah. But of course, the goal is not just to give a number to agree with experiment. Uh, importantly, uh, we discover some uh, useful interaction that have not been 
discovered before. For example, in this case, we found a pi pi interaction. Okay, this is a phenolic, there's a non phenolic, you can have pi pi favorable interaction and only exist in this, you know, uh, the favored uh, transition state. And that was not noted before. And by discovering this new feature, we actually uh, promoted experimental study to expand the substrate uh, the scope, which means that some new, new uh, substrate can also be used to uh, do this kind of transformations. Previously, they didn't know huh? because uh, now we know that, oh, as long as you have this group, this will help the reaction. So then substrate can also, uh, this kind of substrate can also be used. Okay, and uh, I will not talk much detail, but also can show you that for, you know, very similar, like this system compared to here, just a niche and O difference, but they undergo different chemical reaction. This is the CH transition, that is a cycle of nation. And what's the origin? So actually this kind of things, you know, we can also give excellent uh, prediction, but I will not go over uh, the details, okay? Basically in summarize, you know, in summary, uh, you know, calculations, uh, using the quantum chemical uh, methods can give excellent prediction for spectroscopic properties, protein structures, and also biological and catalytic reaction. And to deal with not only the reactivity like mechanisms, but also some stereo selectivity and also chemo selectivity, like, like difference in the selectivity of different kind of chemical transformation. Yeah, I want to also thank you know, my students and my collaborators working on the examples. I, uh, and of course I have more actually, uh, but uh, today I just, due to time limit, I just only show a few examples. And of course the support, generous support from funding agencies. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you again for your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much, Yong. Uh, a huge amount of work that uh, you've done. Uh, very impressive. Uh, I know we are uh, seven minutes. Uh, 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 behind uh, the schedule and uh, we have time for one question from the audience please okay if not i have a question for you Yong. um uh, do you write your own code or you use uh, some sort of uh, commercial uh, package for your computational studies okay so uh yeah uh, for this purpose we we use the 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 commercial software like called Gaussian, you know, and the original developer of this uh, software actually got also Nobel Prize before. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the most widely used, one of the you know, most widely used uh, quantum chemistry package. Yeah. 